Hello and welcome to another episode of Distilling Greatness. I'm Jeff Arnett, the master distiller at Company Distilling, and today we're coming to you from our beautiful distillery here in Townsend, Tennessee. And we actually have a, a really interesting guest here today, and I hope you're going to enjoy the conversation that we have going. Uh, this is Nate Boyer. Uh, he, let me see. Grew up in Northern California. You served in Special Forces, Green Beret. Came back after the military and went to college. Yes, played sir. football at Texas. Yep. Had a NFL career. Short, but yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's many. People yeah, say more, a cup of coffee that, is more like a shot of espresso. That, well, that's, that's, that's <laughs> more common than I think people realize. Yeah. That those careers aren't long for a lot of people. But anyway, we went on to uh, just start merging vets and players. Yep. Um, a charity organization. Uh, started a company called Eight Primal. Yep. Yeah, meat company. <laughs> yeah. Excited uh, about that. It, and because beef is king down in Texas. That's right. Absolutely. Uh, but we are honored to have you here today. Thank you so much it's for joining us here. and making the trip to Townsend. Of course. Well, yeah. I mean, just up the road uh, is where I was born, actually. I was yeah. born, in, uh, born in Oak Ridge, but until I was I think one and a half, uh, we lived in Knoxville, a little mm -hmm. house. So I'm going to cruise by there, <laughs> check on it today, yeah. later. But then, yeah, then moved to Northern California where I grew up and everything. So my dad went to... Uh, the other UT, as we call it, in yeah. Texas, and I'm sure here in Tennessee. <laughs> There's a lot of ribbing going on the now, other right? UT, yeah, I mean, this one's first. This one's, yeah. you know, this one's older for sure. Um, just a little different shade of orange. Yeah, but y'all's is bigger. <laughs> it's <laughs> Every, bigger. Everything's bigger in Texas, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But you know what? I, I love that actually both football teams, after being not great for yeah. quite a while. Been in the cellar for a little bit. Because I wasn't, when, we were, when I was playing, we were eight and five, nine and four kind of yeah. deal. And I know a lot of Tennessee fans were, you know, probably since maybe Peyton Manning, you know, it's kind yeah, of been, we had, we went through the rotating coaches, right. You know, where we, the savior came in and then three, two or three years later, it was like, you're the devil, you're out of here. Yeah. <laughs> but, exact same with Texas, exact same yeah. with Texas. But now it's like both teams are top 10 football teams and beating really good teams like Alabama. And we love oh, that. Yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, <laughs> anyway, so it's cool to see. Well, you know, I think you know, of course, you know, Somebody who's been a little bit beaten and battered along the way, but Sarkeesian, I think he's a really good coach. He's a great you know? coach. He's yeah, a great he coach. He's proven know. that. He's offensive minded, and he he, I mean, he can build a team. There's for sure. something too, I think, with coaches. Well, probably with any person, but I think with coaches, there's something to getting your butt kicked a little bit yeah. and maybe making some mistakes. Yep. Um, because I I got to play for Pete Carroll for a short time up in Seattle. Yeah. Okay. And Pete. Uh, you know, he had a run in the NFL mm -hmm. when he was younger with the with the Jets and the Patriots and. He was kind of a high stress guy, didn't do well, <laughs> didn't win. Yeah. Went back to college, you know, went to USC, yeah. completely changed his process, you know, and yeah. became much more of a of a zen kind of guy and like let's let's be positive and have fun. This is football. You know, we're going to work hard, we're going to compete every day, but totally changed his philosophy. Yeah. Won a couple national championships and then won a Super Bowl with the Seahawks and sure. he'll be in the Hall of Fame. What, so. what I most remember about Pete Carroll is anytime the the cameras ever cut to him, he was usually not standing. He paced a lot, didn't he? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. he was standing, but yeah, I thought he meant sitting <laughs> yeah, and, chew, yeah. and chomping that gum. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He, yeah, yeah. He was always in motion. It seemed like yeah. he, he had a lot of nervous energy. It seemed yeah. when the game was going. Yeah, I mean, he's his, not, his gears, he gears were going fast. He's the oldest coach in the yeah. league when he, he retired last though. year. No, yeah, he acted no. like he's about forty-three. I think he was seventy-three. So yeah. pretty wild. <laughs> I admire people like that because yeah. I, I, you know, I. I see some people from high school every now and then, and no offense, everybody, but you know, some of them are like, "Ooh, life's been rough." You yeah. Know? <laughs> but uh, you know, I, and I, my, my brother is four years older than me and looks ten years younger, so I kind of use him as my reference, and I need to kind of take better care of myself yeah. because he's he's done a really good job of it and is very youthful. Yeah. But yeah, there's something to so, it. So so tell me a little bit. You know, what was the inspiration behind? You grew up in Northern California. Um, you did some volunteer work in the Sudan. You ended up getting into the military. Yeah. Kind of where where did that heart to serve come from what what was the driving force uh and, uh, and you that led you there i mean so yeah I, I, you know grew up in the bay both my parents by the way my, my dad went to university of tennessee uh, veterinary school yep my mom was working over at oak ridge national lab um i don't remember being here obviously we were so young when i moved but we moved to the bay because my mom got into this uh doctoral program at uc berkeley mm -hmm. uh, she got a phd um in environmental engineering Oh, wow. Um, and you were one of the first women in her class, like just, well, that very, was on the leading edge, I would say of environment, you know, environmental absolutely. work became much more important over the last few decades. Yeah, exactly. You know, this but, is yeah. in the early eighties, probably 82 when they yeah. went out there. And, and then my dad, you know, he's a racehorse veterinarian. So he got a job at a place called Golden Gate Fields year round. They race 365 days a year, long days working on the track. You know, he's up at four thirty. 
He gets home sometimes at seven, seven days a week, even on Christmas, like the guy's got to work. That's just the way, way it is. And, and then my mom too. So I had two parents that were highly motivated, you know, educated, um, and they did it kind of, I don't want to say all themselves. I mean, they had good, they had good parents and leadership in their uh, worlds too, but, but just very, very blue collar, um, and not really complaining at the same time, somehow always there for me and my brother and sister. Like there was never, you know, a need there. We, we didn't always have a lot, but always plenty of love. There was, there was never like, no, you can't do that. It was like, if that's what you want to do. You, you know, you can, you can go try, but you better do it. You better do it a hundred percent. So I had that kind of leading me. Well, then I get to high school and you know, I'm rebelling and not doing well in school and I don't want to go to college. I don't, you know, I want to do it my own way, which sure. it makes sense. I mean, that's, what's, oh, yeah. that's what you do as a teenager. So I graduated, I moved to San Diego, worked on a fishing boat for a while and I loved it. I mean, it was like, it was the adventure of can't it. Can't beat it the was, weather. It was, yeah, can't beat the weather. It was hard work and learned a lot. Yeah. And, and then, you know, moved up to Los Angeles with an interest in film and television and doing yeah. that. Uh, at that time, I was 19. And then a year later, 9-11 happens and didn't join the military right away. It took, right away. It took me three more years uh, of living in Los Angeles and kind of stumbling around and, you know, trying a little of this, a little of that. Um, you know, did some, did some really cool stuff, but also felt a little bit rudderless and kind of uh, like lacking that, that sense of purpose and identity. And um, I feel, think that's just guys. You know, yeah, I've got no. a son and a daughter and, and you know, not, not – my, they're they're very different, but yeah, right. my daughter has a much better idea, and I always seem to have had a better idea about what she wants to do and I how think to they get grow there. Up a little you know, faster. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they, they have, there's a little bit of a maturity there that I know will come for my yeah. son. He needs to figure it out. He's yeah. a great kid, great yeah. heart, really smart. So I think he's going to do well. But my daughter just seems to have that vision of like, this is what I want to do, and this is how I'm going to get it. Yeah, no, I mean, that's powerful. I, <laughs> yeah. I envy it yeah. because I feel yeah. like when I look back, sometimes I feel like I kind of wasted yeah. four years, or five yeah. years or whatever. And it's not true. No. I needed to go through those things. I needed to, to get to me, you know, to get yeah. me where I was going. But, but anyway, yeah, so it was like all of a sudden I'm 23. You know, friends are graduating college and starting lives and jobs and families. And yeah. I'm just like, no, <laughs> you know, no clue. And, uh, and then, so I went over and did some relief work. You'd mentioned, I went mm -hmm. to the Darfur in, uh, in the Sudan and, um, and it was amazing. 60 days, uh, was all the visa, you know, mm -hmm. all you. the time I had. Yeah. But yep. learned a lot, uh, felt that sense of purpose really felt, um, mm -hmm. a, a sense of gratitude as well from the people there and kind of yep. in a weird way gained my patriotism over there because so many of those people were enamored with America and like oh, yeah. the opportunity. And of course, like we, we know this, like much of the world would, would give anything of to course. have a shot out here. And so it's not that it had never crossed my mind, but I guess I didn't, it's hard to sometimes believe things till you see it and you're around it. Yep. And so that sort of inspired me a bit. And then the last week there, I got malaria and this family took oh, care whoa. of me and they put me up. And they, you know, it was in a mud hut in, 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 uh, in Chad, the neighboring country to Sudan. Um, but they wouldn't take a dollar and they were just like, no, no, you, you know, you're our guest here. Like, let us take care of you. So they put me up in this room and put a radio next to the bed. And the only station that worked was uh, BBC News. And I was listening to the second battle of Fallujah that was going on. This is in uh, the fall of 2004. And I just remember like, like just thinking and part of it was maybe I was, I hadn't eaten anything in a while. I couldn't yeah. keep anything down. <laughs> in a, I was moment, in a moment of weakness. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, you know what, when I come home, I'm going to join the military. I kind of okay. just made that decision and, you know, came back and you know, a couple months later, I'm, uh, I'm in basic training and, you know, start my training to be a green beret. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's an aggressive one. <laughs> yeah, know? no, yeah. it was. Yeah. You didn't come back just to, you know, to do a little bit. I mean, that's, I think that's that aspirational that's for, you know, part for of that's so many my, people. I mean, that's my yeah. parents and, and also when I was little growing up, all my heroes were professional athletes. And, you know, I just, I, I was a dreamer. I was always a dreamer. Like I, okay. I, I didn't know how to apply it until right. really maybe the start of it was this trip. And, and then in the military, of course, and how to sacrifice and really work for something. But I always had these, you know, these visions of grandeur of doing something important and special. And if you're going to do it, do it big, go a hundred percent as my, as my folks did. And 
so yeah, so I, I found out about this special forces program where you could come in off the street and go, you know, you go to basic training, airborne school, and then if you, your test scores are high enough, you get an opportunity to go to special forces selection and just try out basically. Yeah. And if you get through that, then you still got about a year and a half of training to become a Green Beret. So I signed up for that. It was the 18 X-ray contract is what it's called. I signed up for it. I luckily scored high en enough on like the language aptitude test and the yeah. psyche val and the, you know, the ASVAB and flight physical and all that stuff. And so I was like, all right, I guess this is it. And if you don't make it, you, you know, if you, especially if you get through airborne school, you go to like the 82nd airborne and sure. 101st airborne and like these kind of iconic, you know, oh, yeah. legendary units. It's not like you're not doing anything right. cool or special. Um, but I, I was like, I'm just going to go for it and see yeah. if special forces. Of course, having been raised in Tennessee, uh, Fort Campbell, 101st Airborne, yeah. based out of there. So yep. that, you, you hear quite a bit. Of course, a lot of what they do is they don't disclose. Right. You know, it's done in secret and stuff yeah. until, until maybe after it's done. Right. And then you'll get some recognition that this is the group that supported that or executed yeah. that mission and everything. But and that's that was the, a, always a little bit of a sense of pride. I think Kentucky and Tennessee share it because totally. it's right there at Clarksville. Yeah, I, I was just there uh, earlier this year. Actually, it was yep. it was awesome, and you know, and the 160th is up there as well, yep. which is a, a special operations air wing. Okay. So they're flying around, you know, the special forces and the Delta guys and all yeah. that stuff. And and then yeah, the 100. I mean, that's the Band of Brothers. You know, it's yeah. an iconic, <laughs> iconic uh, yeah. unit uh, jumping in on D Day, and and then you know, for the last 80 years, just yeah. being a part of some really special stuff. Yeah, I had, while I was still with Jack Daniels, I had an opportunity to to host some people who were um, like SEAL Team Six, mm, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, or Gold Team, I think it was. Um, th they were all big fans of Jack Daniels, but I remember we always had very strict instructions. You couldn't photograph them, couldn't identify them, and stuff like that, because they basically operated mostly trying to look like locals. Yeah, you know, they, yeah, they weren't always, they were hardly ever. And these guys looked like you know they were tough. Yeah, <laughs> I could just tell you they were they were nice. But it was like you wouldn't want to tangle with them. You no, know, they no, were just no. I could tell. <laughs> you get a sense it's of somebody just, sometimes. It's a special like, group, yeah. you know. The SEAL yeah. Team Six guys and the Delta Force guys, there's only two, three hundred of them, I think, at a time. You yeah. know, it's real small units. I had an opportunity yeah. to do some training over with the Delta Force folks in the past and got to know some of those guys over the years. And they're also very unassuming. You oh, yeah. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like they're just the, the usually the sweetest guys off the field. You sure. know, you just don't want to get. Oh, like I said, they they, they were very very nice, but you could yep. just kind of sense that if yeah. if stuff it's, started going down, yeah, they could handle it. It's this quiet, <laughs> yeah, confidence, yeah. and you know something about you're just like, Whew, all right, yeah. yeah, that guy's different. So for somebody who it took him a while to figure it out, you said you kind of drifted there for a little bit. Uh, yeah, I think obviously you've you've come out of that with a very clear mindset, with a drive. Ambition I don't know to, if it's to do clear, something, yeah. But well, it's a mindset. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. Uh, so, you know, what would you say um, have been some of the challenges that you've met along the way? Because I mean, you have you've gone back. You went back to school at a much older than the people that yeah. you were playing with. Twenty nine year old freshman. There, there you go, and became one that you were awarded like inspirational player uh, and stuff like that. Because probably because of your maturity at that point, the influence the other guys have probably looked up to you because you'd been in the military and all that stuff, and then still had the the gumption to get out there is almost 30 years old and play with people in their late teens, early twenties. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah. I mean, it was, it, it became, I think after the military and actually, even though, you know, 23, 24 years old, um, you're not old, yeah. but for basic training, you kind of are, <laughs> yeah, you know, sure. most of those guys are 18, 19, 20. Yeah. And so, uh, at that point I was like, all right, well, I mean, it's no big deal. It's like I just did this a little bit later. And, mm -hmm. and in some ways, there were a lot of advantages because I lived off on my own for five years and kind of mm -hmm. did, you know, did some other stuff, worked, uh, worked my way to where I got, you know, and took care of myself and, um, and explored a little bit and took a couple adventures and messed up, you know yeah. what I mean? Made some mistakes and all that stuff. There's value in all that stuff. So um, that helped me, I think, in the training aspect and just, also pushing myself, like not wanting to regret anything, you know, whatever I do, I'm, I'm just going to, uh, however this works out in the, you know, in the army, I'm just going to go balls to the wall, hundred percent. And you know, yeah. the results aren't up to me. Uh, sure. I, I choose, it, yeah. I all choose, you can choose the, effort. All, the effort. Yeah. Exactly. Leave the result to. Exactly. Know. Yeah. The scoreboard, it, that's not up to you, but, uh, but anyway, so I kind of took that into the next phase. Yeah. I was in, I, I was in Iraq actually when I made the decision 
to go to Texas and to go yeah. try and play football. And I was on a deployment and it was during football season. And, you know, it's a hard, it's hard. I mean, special forces, you're in a 12 man team. We were out on a, on an outpost kind of far from everything. Um, was this during Mac Brown? Yeah. Okay. All this right. During okay, Coach yeah. Brown. Yep. Right. And Mac had been on a USO tour over there, I think while I was in country, but, um, not in the same place I was, I had just heard that, mm -hmm. you know, he's one of these guys that when the, you know, when the helo comes in and, and the coaches get off and all the, you know, soldiers want to meet him and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like Mac would, you know, hold the, hold the, the aircraft for an hour if needed to make mm -hmm. sure he shook every hand, yeah. you know, and, and, and had a moment to, some time to spend with every soldier and signed every autograph, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, so that guy, maybe he won't cut me. You know what I mean? That was, yeah. my, <laughs> that was the thought. No, yeah. but, but seriously, I, I, I respected that a lot. And obviously University of, of, of Texas is, uh, uh, it's an you know, iconic uh, football program. I'd never played growing up. Yeah. I played baseball, I played basketball, I played all these yeah. other sports and I regretted not playing. And now uh, at that time in my life, it was like, well, no matter what, I don't want to live with regret or I don't want to die with regret. Maybe yeah. more importantly. So I'm just going to, whatever I go to school, I'm just going to try out for the team. So we'll see. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in Iraq and I'm watching, you know, the, I'm watching football games at five in the morning because we're eight, nine hours ahead. Um, so, you know, Monday night football is on at 5 a.m. or whatever it is. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, and watching the college games and I started training. I would, it was, I'd go off on my own behind the Hesco barriers over by the gun range or something and work on footwork, try to learn how to backpedal, running routes, whatever yep. it was, um, to prepare for that. And then, yeah, got into UT and the other UT mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> and just tried out and made the team. And, and then it was like, I'm on the team for that first year. I didn't play. I got to run down on a kickoff, you know, when yep. we were blowing out, uh, Texas tech. And I was like, man, I got to find a way on the field. And yeah. so, I identified the most thankless job maybe in sports, which is long snapping. Oh, yeah, because they only remember if you mess it up, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, if your name's <laughs> you're in the paper, expected. it's for the wrong reason. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You're, you're, nobody's ever going to applaud you doing it right because that's no. the expectation. There. Exactly. <laughs> you know? and, that's, and there's a lot of that in the military. You know, sure. No matter what your job yeah. is, there's a lot of, uh, yeah. you know, I would say thankless because yeah. that's the expectation. It's like, well, yeah, your job is to do this. Like, so yeah. when you don't, you're going to hear about it when you yeah. fail, but – if you do it, if you do it right, if you do it well, it's just like, well, yeah, that's your job. You're supposed yeah. to do that. So, you know, I think, I think that sort of made sense to me. And, and at the end of the day, I just wanted to play. I just sure. wanted to find a way on that field. So I, sure. so I did that. And, um, and it was, yeah, it was weird. I mean, 29 year old freshman, 33 years old when I graduated and you're in that locker room with these young guys. And at first it was a little, I felt a little out of place for sure. Not only missing the military, um, and sort of that, that, comfortability at mm -hmm. that point mm -hmm. of like this is how we talk this is how we yeah. you know this is how we this is what we do every day um you know used to getting screamed at it's not a big deal or or yeah. you know whatever <laughs> and and then it's like you're with a whole new demographic of people and but I learned a lot from them too and it, and it actually it was good for me to kind of uh you know to be around a completely different group of people and still have fortunately have that locker room, you know, have yeah. that camaraderie and that the yeah. Jersey and that I ident identified with instead yeah. of camouflage and a sense of purpose and a mission and all those things. I didn't realize how much I needed them until later in yeah. life, you know, when I lost sure. football as well. Yeah. But you know, I, you know, I was born and raised in Tennessee, but I did um, spend a few years out working for uh, Procter and Gamble, worked in different states. And one of them, I was in Sherman, Texas, okay, um, which is an hour north of Dallas. Yeah. But it gave me a chance. I, I worked alongside people who graduated from UT, some from Texas A&M. Probably some the, from OU, too. Yeah, well, no, no OU's there, <laughs> no. but, I, but I, okay. I understood the hatred yeah, <laughs> that existed, right. the, 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 the competitiveness <laughs> right. of that conference, which, like I said, is very exciting to have that coming to SEC and, and yeah. to have some of those – long-standing uh, rivalry games oh, kind of transfer that, into us. The fact that Texas is playing A&M <laughs> again every year and we yeah. haven't for 12 years. Yeah. I played in the last one. Oh, yeah. Or I was on the sideline for the last one when we uh, – and we beat yeah, him, but, but I, but definitely the time that I spent out there, I, I had told people, I'm like, you know, I think our country would be stronger if everybody loved their state as much as Texas loves its state. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's a sense of pride about being a Texan yeah, uh, that you're, that you kind of are. You're, Sometimes you're, to a fault. It, well, <laughs> I, I would say there's more good than bad yeah. uh, in that, but I, I feel like, you know, 
like what you were saying, you go to some of these other countries and you, you gain an appreciation for what it's like to be an American. I think things that you take for granted are not true about other countries. And, you know, the time that I spent with Jack Daniels, I, I went to 41 different countries and not always wow. to the glamorous touristy spot. Sometimes I went to the, the more poverty stricken. I've seen, I've seen some levels of poverty because of those travels that I probably would have been completely insulated from. Um, if I'd only been here, I, I think where we draw right. the line, the poverty line here is not absolutely desolate. Like it can get in other countries where you 100%. see people have absolutely nothing. And like the majority of the people. Yeah. Have yeah, absolutely yeah. So nothing. I think yeah. even, even people here who are below the poverty line still have some level of standard of living that's sustainable where you worry about some of these others, uh, these yeah. countries that we saw just abject poverty. Like I'd never seen in my life before. It, it made me much more grateful to be an American yeah, uh, and, and the things that we take for granted here, I think them less for granted now. So I'm, I'm grateful. I think if everyone could afford to do it, I think it would be great for every American to spend some time in other countries and serve and go do some volunteer and, work. Go, go, you know? Yeah. Go to some of these countries yeah. uh, that would, they would literally almost kill uh, for the opportunities that you have here. And we, and we, and we kind of get where we dog America because we're not what we once were. We're not perfect and stuff like that. But I, I'm much more of like, yeah, but we got a long way to slide. Guys, if you, if you go yeah. abroad, you will see that this is still a great country and we have the ability to do even more. Yep. And we should aspire to that. We should be the best versions of ourselves. Yeah, I think uh, it, I think there's a bit of a responsibility with that true. too, because most of us, We've not been blessed. all of us, our, our country is very blessed. Yeah, uh, there's absolutely that we have. Yeah, um, yeah but, most most of us, not all of us, but most of us, yeah, uh, didn't didn't really do anything to. Yep. To you know, we were just sort of fortunate to be uh, born here. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, we didn't yeah. really earn that, and, and some people have, and some people came from way worse situations. Sure. Um, but but yeah, we used to say it around the football team. Coach Mac used to have me say it to the guys all the time like just remember even the you know when no matter how hard it is like you know your your worst day here is still probably better than their best day there yeah you know what i mean oh for sure um one of the stories i like to tell about the time that i spent in texas is you know i have a little bit of an accent i assume but, yeah, you do. but people of texas have have one as well yep. and it's similar and of course there's some there's some ties historically that tennessee and texas you know we've sent people down to help oh, yeah. fight for independence and everything yep. there but I can remember meeting a guy when I lived there. I was single. Uh, I was in a dry town, but they had these private club memberships. There was a place there called the library uh, because there was local college. So I guess the kids could tell their parents they were at the library when they were really just going yeah, to drink right. a beer or something. Uh, but I was shooting pool with this guy, and he said, hey, you know, what part of Texas are you from? I know you're not from Sherman, you know. But I said, well, I'm actually not from Texas. But this look came over his face like we couldn't be friends any longer <laughs> if I wasn't a Texan. So I said, I said, I actually grew up in Jackson, Tennessee. And he was like, thank the Lord. That's the only other state in the union worth a damn. <laughs> <laughs> so I do, I do feel like there's this respect between that's Texas funny. and Tennessee. And I'm, like, I'm excited uh, to see these rivalries come into, yeah, come into the football game. Uh, it should be great. It, so it, many great venues. Those type of competitions make force both teams to get better, right? Exactly. So, so hopefully that's what happens on exactly. both accounts here. But so tell us a little bit. You co-founded Managing Vets and Players. Um, yeah, Merging Vets and Players. Merge, excuse me, Merging Vets. And no, you're players. Good. What you're did good. I say? Managing. <laughs> managing. That's close oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, merging. Right. So this is Merging Vets and Players. Yeah. Uh, it brings together uh, military uh, yep. with players. And so what? What was the inspiration behind that? What? what so Merging Vets and Players, and, and we just it. call it MVP for short. Okay. Um, and I will say this for anybody out there that wants to learn more. Um, you know, our website's vetsandplayers.org, but there's a movie called MVP okay. that's on uh, Paramount Plus and Prime and Apple TV. Okay. Um, and I co-wrote it and directed it and produced it and, you know, acted in it alongside <laughs> like Randy Couture and Tony Gonzalez and uh, oh, wow. Jay Glazer, who I co-founded MVP with, okay. is in it as well. And other athletes and then all the vets are played by actual vets. But it tells the story of how MVP started, the genesis of it. So in the mm -hmm. film... There's a, a, a Marine living in a homeless shelter and a former NFL player, yeah. first year out of the league. And they're both struggling uh, to let go of the past mm -hmm. and sort of embrace the future um, and find that sense of purpose, find that same fire that they had when they were, you know, running down on kickoff and when they were, you know, in a firefight and mm -hmm. like fighting for their lives and that, that, camaraderie you know the mm -hmm. brotherhood the number one thing veterans and athletes say when you ask them what they miss they always say i miss the guys yeah more than anything because there's yeah. just that that kinship that you develop yeah. under intense circumstances and not that war and, and playing sports are the same we would never say that like the battlefield and the ball field are different places but 
the preparation, the amount mm. of sacrifice, different kind of sacrifice, but the amount of sacrifice to be elite is very similar. Um, the uniform, the locker room, all those things uh, are very similar. And then losing those things is very hard. And you're usually pretty young, 20s and 30s, you know, yeah. and you feel like you're, you've peaked and you'll never be great again. And I went through that too. You know, I spent time in, in both uniforms and both locker rooms. And I was 34 when I got cut from the Seahawks. And that was it. And uh, I'd gotten out of the military just a few years prior. While, while I was playing ball at University of Texas, I was still in the guard. So I was deploying in the summertime. So I had this crazy tempo of life where it was sure. going to uh, Afghanistan, coming back, going to training camp, playing football, going to class, spring ball, preparing to go deploy again, going to deploy, like all just bang, 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 go, go, go. Uh, and I chose all of it. I loved it. But all of a sudden it's like over and now there's this stillness and quiet that you think you'd welcome but it was i needed the, i missed the chaos a little sure. bit you know and i missed the uh the stress um and the problem solving and i don't know it's it was a strange thing so that's why filmmaking became something for me because there is a lot of that involved in it of course no one's shooting at you but it's it's they're, it's hard to do you know what i mean and there's 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 a lot that goes wrong and you're trying to figure this thing out. It's long days and you're trying to tell a story and people, you know, people bail and you got to <laughs> find somebody else. And I don't know. It's uh, I, I, cause I need that, that, that feeling. And I think sure. that's a lot, a very similar uh, thing for a lot of athletes and a lot of veterans. So we do share that. We're, and we're also kind of heroes to each other. You know, there's a mutual respect. We look up to each other. Sure. So it says that the work at MVP is much more about giving someone a hand up and not a handout. Yeah. And I, I imagine for a lot of these people, they do need help, but there's a, there's a pride, right? And, and Totally. Yeah. And say, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. Especially when you're dealing with guys. Yeah. You know, they want to admit they're vulnerable or need some help. Right. Um, so, you know, how do you penetrate that, you know, sort of that, you know, even when you can see that there's a need. Yeah. Um, and, and how have you been able to kind of manage that? Yeah, we have a, we have a tough time asking for help, you know what I mean? Even yeah. if we know we need it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think that that, <laughs> with MVP, you know, we meet up in the gym. We have chapters all over the country. We meet up mm -hmm. in the gym, we train together, work out, and then we huddle up and it's just peer-to-peer -peer coaching, open forum, just talking about our stuff, right? And <clears throat> just getting people through the door is, is tough because they don't want to maybe admit that they could use this. Uh, they don't want to look vulnerable or, or, you know, there's this misconception that, you know, it's weak to, to say that you're, you know, you're struggling or you're not happy or you're, you know, you need, you, you need, you need a hand. Um, and, it, and when it's just the opposite, I mean, there's way much more courage in saying like, you know, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I'm not good right now. Like I, I actually am struggling and I need help. Um, but people, you know, it's, it's, it's just, societal norms and sure. you know what what we and and, and those that that feeling you know that that right. shame i guess that that comes with that um and it's not it's not a real thing it's just it's in our heads but the you know it is what it is well if um, it's in your head it's real to you right yeah that's <laughs> perception's true. reality that's true you know? that's true <laughs> for sure but that you know that yeah. voice in our head is a, is, is oh, a yeah. dangerous thing you know it's not it's not yeah. us it's we're the one who listens to that voice but that voice yeah. is uh, it's always there and it's never going to leave. Well, I, you know, I think it's important for men in particular to, to find somebody that maybe a little older than you, maybe has been through sections of life that you're facing Yeah. Uh, to find somebody that uh, can mentor you yeah. uh, to kind of give you perspective and stuff right. like that, wherever you find that, whether it's through organizations like yours or uh, somebody at work or somebody yeah. that, you know, is, you know, lives in your neighborhood or you might go to church with, uh, it's important to have people like that yeah. in your life who help you see yourself. Uh, yeah. when, when you can't quite see yourself. Well, I mean, th I think the, the best way to do it, to find those people, mm -hmm. um, is to be vulnerable yourself and just mm -hmm. to be honest, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You don't have to be over the top with it and, right. you know, but just be real. Like if you, you, you know, I, I mean, and that's, that's the truth for me. Like I, every day there's some kind of battle I'm fighting, you know, or something mm -hmm. going on. It, it's not, um, yeah, <laughs> maybe perception isn't reality because some people yeah. perceive they're like oh you know you're doing all these cool things and you're now you're making movies and you're doing you yeah. know start a grind start, start a company <laughs> but i'm like yeah but it's yeah i'm still often very lonely and empty and feeling like am i doing the right thing questioning every everything mm -hmm. you know and um and that's and it's and when you try to do that alone 
Mm -hmm. You don't have people in your life that you're willing to kick around this stuff and, and talk about it. Uh, it's tough. It's yeah. hard, even, even harder, you know, but when you have those people, as you say, those, those, uh, mentors, leaders, people you look up to, um, people you admire, uh, mm -hmm. that can be like, yeah, dude. I mean, we all feel that. And just rem just reminding yeah. you that You're this okay. is, it's quite yeah. normal. It's normal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No one, there's nobody yeah. out there that's just sure. happy all the time or despite what Instagram tells you, yeah. you know what I mean? Sure. Or what it well, looks no, like. Yeah. Most people are not posting the worst moments of their life on no. social media. You no. know, it's, you, you, you kind of perfect that shot yeah. and you edit it and yeah, oh, you, I'm yeah, just as guilty you as the next, the ugly parts, you know, and, and I'm say, just hey, as guilty as the next, you know? but it's like, which I'm kind of grateful for. Cause if everybody was like, you know, gloom and doom, if everybody was like Eeyore, you know, yeah. on their posts, I'd like, Oh, I got to get off here. It's yeah. like depressing me. It'd something bring you, terrible. Bring you down but, a little bit. But, um, so besides merging vets and players, you've yeah. also uh, decided to mix it up a little bit and start up a new company. I can, I can speak for, uh, for people who've done that to know that that's tough, especially, you know, in the last few years, yeah. you know, things, this has been a tough environment, you know, for any totally. new company to start, but tell us a little bit about eight primal. Yeah. Eight primal. Um, yeah, we're excited about it. I mean, it's, it's from Texas, so the, yeah, the pride hey, is there. Yeah, um, Texas but, will support you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just ask Tito's. They will exactly. <laughs> Tito's a good guy. He's a he's a good. I know Tito. A, I've met Tito at the San Antonio Bar Show years oh, yeah. ago. Yeah, he's he, he, he insisted that we swap numbers. I've not called him, but he, I, he do should, have, I do. Have, I do have him in my. He's, a, he's a cool cat, man. Yeah. Um, How great is it? Your last name is Beverage. I know his last <laughs> name is really <laughs> Beverage. It's you, spelled different. Yeah, you but, start a vodka company. And yeah, your last name Beverage. Exactly. Everyone told him it's got to be tequila, and he's like, I don't like. Tequila, I like vodka. Yeah. Like, All right. Um, but yeah, eight primal. So so it's a mm -hmm. subscription meat company, you know. Um, and, and and you know, there's other ones that exist absolutely. Sure. Uh, but the fact that you know, I'm living in Austin, and mm -hmm. the family farm where all the cattle comes from and the pork as well is about an hour from Texas, and everything is born there, bred there, you know, butchered, packaged and shipped out of the same location. So they're now out of Austin, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like free range, yeah. um, really free range. I was just out there uh, yeah. again. And, you know, to get this, to see how these cows, you know, live and, and, and uh, you know, everything that, when you, when you look, when you hear about and, and you know, understand mm -hmm. that it's not like this for all of them, some, some of those places are pretty brutal. Yeah. And then a lot of these companies, uh, the meat's not from the United States even. They ship it in yeah. from other countries. And, you know, I mean, I'm sure it's good, but I like the idea of everything being here. You know, yeah. it's all happening in America. Everyone says, oh, I want to buy American. I want to su 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 yeah. uh, support American companies and, well, you know, prove it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I it's, it's, it's tough to do, but if you find the right people, we met this husband and wife down there that run this place, and they're just salt of the earth, and they're yeah. very excited, and they're awesome. They've been doing it for a long time, kind of on their own, and now it's like, all right, well, you know, we have, we have an idea here, and we're going to be giving back veteran organizations through every sale, um, starting with MVP. Yeah. And so, yeah, eight, eight primal is, uh, there's eight primal cuts on a cow and that's okay. where the, that's okay. where the name right. comes right. from. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, I encourage everybody to check it out and, and, you know, and put an order in and know you're supporting, you know, good, uh, a good cause while you're getting some good meat. Sure. So, and they, so they do beef and pork and yeah. Okay. Beef and pork starting out and okay. eventually we'll have chicken so, and other So how things. long has the company been going now? Oh, about two weeks. Oh, wow. yeah, okay. Yeah. This is we fresh. Just, we <laughs> just, yeah, fresh, we just fresh. launched. Okay. Yeah. So we've been nice. developing it for a while and kind of okay. working on it. And, um, but yeah, we are just up and rolling. Yeah. You know, a friend of mine just recently posted something on social media uh, that I, uh, friends of mine from Louisiana, but yeah. they, they posted like in the case of chickens, if something is organic or cage free, they showed you the living conditions of those chickens. It's not what you imagine no. it to be. The wording because you, you think it's, is confusing. It's better. I think yeah. when they showed the, like, what pasture, pasture raised uh, looked like, and it was about the only one that probably is of what you're thinking. Right. You know, it's humane conditions where they're kind of living more in their natural environment and just kind of doing their thing. Yes. Uh, With some freedom to move around. And, yeah. You know, yeah, they're, they're, they're just... in there so thick they can hardly move, but there's no cage. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, it's very deceiving what you're <laughs> yeah, allowed to say absolutely. and what you can get, a, get away with. And, <laughs> and that's a tough thing for, um, for, any, for, any, you know, for any company that's trying to do it right. It's, it's kind of unfair, you know, yeah. but it is what it is. The battle you fight when you, and you, when you go to the grocery store, it's, you know, it's hard to know where any of that stuff's from. I mean, you don't yeah. know typically it's, you know, you, it's, so I like the idea of knowing where it's from. You know, if I was in Texas, I'd have the opportunity to go out there and you sure. know, 
look at it and see it for myself, and that's cool. So as someone, you've got a very diverse background, as we've sat here and talked. Yeah. You know, you've, you've lived a lifetime and you're still pretty young, so that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what advice would you have for people, you know, based on all that you've learned? You, you've had, you've, you've played football, you've served in the military, you've started charity, you've started a company. Yeah. You know, what, what advice do you have kind of looking back? You know, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? You know, what would you have done differently? What, what's your best advice for people who maybe want to follow one of the paths you've taken in your life so far? Well, to speak on the age thing, you, you know, you're, you're never too old. I think people assume a pivot is just, it's not worth it. It's too mm -hmm. hard. It's impossible. And I think that's unfair. You're doing yourself a disservice. First of yeah. all, life is short mm -hmm. and you only got one shot at this as far as I know. Yep. Um, and the last thing you want to be do, you want to do is be laying on that deathbed, you know, and, mm, with and, regret. And, yeah. And saying, man, I wish I would have just done Could've that taken or tried that, taking a shot because you know, people will often say, they'll look at my life and look at, you know, things that people have done there and they're like, oh, wow, you're crazy. That's crazy. You did that. You know, that you, yeah. you know, I'm like, is it? To me, it's crazy if you're doing something you don't care about, you know, you're not yeah. passionate about. And I understand work is work. Work is hard. It's not all like, I just love every moment of every day. Right. There's a lot of rejection and failure and struggle and all that. But if it's something you're passionate about, yeah. it pushes you through and you'll look back on those times. And I think it, build, it builds character to builds persevere. Character. And it absolutely the, does. The greatest you know, memories. The easy times don't make us stronger. No. Yeah, it's the, the and tough the greatest times. memories are the grind. You're like, yeah. man, oh, yeah. I did, but I didn't quit. You yeah. know, and that's just like, I saw it that's through. awesome. And even if at the end of the yeah. day, the scoreboard doesn't reflect what you <laughs> hoped, yeah. what you, you know, you, you, you know that like, I'm doing what I, I'm doing what I uh, feel like I was meant to do maybe, sure. or like I feel passionate about. And I think... That's the biggest one right there would just be like, do not sell yourself short. Don't talk, sure. don't let that voice in your head talk you out of it. Just go give it a shot, you know, um, or go or go learn about it, explore it. If there's something you're interested in that you never tried, you know, uh, to, to think that, you know, you're not enough and you don't, you're not talented enough and good enough. That's, yeah. that's BS because, I mean, I'm, I think I'm a testament to that. Like I, I, I never, I, I never thought the military would have been the right place for me. And, and mm. I, you know, I, I didn't really believe that I could make it to the NFL. You know, I mm -hmm. dreamt it and thought like, oh, wow, that'd be great. But I didn't believe myself that way until I started just showing up and putting the work in. And pretty soon you give yourself reasons to believe. And then you're like, oh, this is like, I can do this. All these other people are also just people with doubts yeah. and fears and, you know, insecurities just like me. But they're making a decision to just go for it. And so now I'm one of those people, too. Yeah, you know, I, I can definitely relate to what you said there, though, that, you know, you're never, you're never too old, it's never too late. You know, I found myself in my mid-50s. I had spent 30 years as a corporate employee yeah. uh, for Procter & Gamble and for Brown Foreman, who owned Jack Daniels, and both were really good companies, yeah. and I learned a ton. But I'd gotten to that moment. I, I was at the pinnacle of, of working for someone in my industry. To be the master distiller of Jack Daniels is a, yeah. is a title that people, you know, would cherish dream having. About. I would dream about having, absolutely. Um, but I also understood myself well enough that the, you know, the 20-ish year old version of myself would have said, I'm going to learn something that I'm passionate about and want to do, and I'm going to start my own company someday. Yeah. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. And the question was, do I want to disrupt that? I've got a family. I've got kids off to college. You know, my, this is, we're comfortable. Yeah. You know, Jack Daniels is a great company. Is it worth, you know, risking all of that? to live out this dream that I had right. you know, 30 years ago. Yeah. And the one thing I don't want to live with is regret. You know, no. I, I think for me, I, I was willing to, to put it on the line to, to start something new. And, um, but yeah, I think, I think that's important for people. Yep. So if you're listening to everybody, um, there's life on the other side of whatever you're dealing with, you know, just, yeah, yeah just believe in yourself. Don't, you don't, you don't, don't have quit. to be perfect. I, I think, I think what people have learned is that if you just, have a heart to serve if you do excellent customer service even if you're not perfect a lot of times that's enough to win the day yeah yeah so exactly. just be conscientious be a and, good uh, person yeah that's, I, that's uh yeah. one of the guys people i played with in seattle people will pay for customer service yeah it seems exactly. like it died during the pandemic no <laughs> you know? no it's true yeah i mean I, I when i was in like i said short yeah. short time with the yep. seahawks but that team that locker room from marshawn lynch to you know michael bennett and and uh uh Cam Chancellor and Bobby Wagner and yeah. Russell Wilson, Jimmy Graham. Oh, crazy, yeah. You played with some great, huge, great players. Great here. players, big personalities. But Michael yeah. Bennett used to always, and he was like, that dude, you know, 
he's not he's fearless yeah. and he'll confront anybody if he yeah. feels like they need to be confronted yeah. but at the same time you know he's, he's he's respectful and his whole mantra was always just be a good person just yeah. be a good person at the end of the day no matter what you believe what you think you know no matter who's elected that has no bearing on how you treat your neighbor you know what yeah. i mean like that is it's always up to you and that's and that's important because that's that is what we need more of not just in the country in the world yeah. um but it's but it's that you, you control that every day and that's nice to know so you can do all these things you can have these dreams and passions and pursuits and kind of and and just go for it at the same time just be nice to people yeah <laughs> you know treat yeah. them with respect everybody even if even if you you know fervently disagree with them sure. just just respect them and understand their beliefs are shaped by their experiences. They may be very different than yours, uh, but they're still people. You know, what, I think one of the most common questions I've gotten since starting Company Distilling was, why did you name it Company? Yeah, why did you name it Company? <laughs> you know, we went through 36 names uh, okay. to select Company, so you must wonder what the other 35 were, right? Uh, no, actually, b b because we were formed during the pandemic and they were shutting down bars and restaurants, about the only way for you to be around people you know, to gather with good company. The, mm. the word company, we, we now, it seems like it's almost exclusively who you are employed by, where you get a check and stuff right. like that. But originally the word company meant those you break bread with. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it, it kind of speaks to the value, that. the value of community and taking the time to gather around with people who, you know, as iron sharpens iron, you know, people who yeah. kind of build you up and help refill your cup. Yeah. Uh, if you will, you, you kind of talked about that, that, you know, a lot of what people who are ex-military or ex-football players, yeah. when they're no longer part of the unit, when they're no longer on the team, that that sense of isolation and loneliness that comes from and how important it is that we're very social beings. Yeah. That we're not we're, we're not we're not meant. Yeah. We're not meant to, to do this alone. It, it's very yeah. important that we spend time together. Uh, and we wanted to be a brand that was befitting that moment of your life. If, yeah. you know, if there may not be family, but they're people that you've planned time with. You're going to have them come over and make quality time and memories with them. And we wanted to be a brand that you could rely upon in those moments. Yeah. So that's gather around with good company. Spirits hey. made for the best of company. Companionship. So, absolutely. You know, that is what company, so, that, that's that word. So assuming that that is a practice that you, that you have. Um, what is your perfect gathering around experience? I mean, who's there? What, how does that day, how does that evening go? How would you describe um, well, when you gather around? What, what would make the perfect moment for I'm you? I'm still a massive sports fan. Okay. So like... <laughs> I am too. And that's a self. I played in thing. high school. I did not have any aspirations some for college my, or pro, but... Some of my, you know, some of my companions yeah. would rather not have the TV <laughs> on in the background with the game on, but like to me, if, yeah. I, if it's up to me, that's kind of sure. a perfect thing. But then it's like... Yeah, it's it's it'd be a hodgepodge of people I served in the military with, people I played sports with, my family, you sure. know, my friends that could give, you know, to to you know what's about football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And maybe it's around, you know, football's during the holidays, yeah. which I also love. So maybe it's around a holiday or something like that. But I mean, and I always think of my folks' house. And they live in Nevada now, you know, okay. um, different spot, but it still feels like home when you go back there just mm -hmm. because you know, your, your siblings come and their kids and, and the whole thing. And, and so, yeah, I think something like that sprinkled in with some of these folks from other, you know, junctions in my life. And, yep. and, uh, you know, we'd all be gathering around there and, um, yeah, if so fitting, we're all enjoying a nice <laughs> glass of, of company. Sure. Well, Nate, I can't thank you enough for making the trip over to Townsend today to be a part of this. Uh, so for people who would like to continue to follow you on this journey, people who'd like to potentially get involved in supporting some of the charity work you're doing, what would you say, how should they start? Yeah, uh, well, you know, uh, on social media, I'm at Nate Boyer 37. 37 was my college number. Okay. Um, but yes, please go to vetsandplayers.org to learn more about MVP and watch the MVP movie, I'm telling you. Uh, we're working I'm, I'm on going to do that for sure. Thank you. Yes. Please do. Yeah. We're working on a, a D-Day 80th anniversary documentary right now. So filming that probably be out next spring. Um, so excited about that. But then, yeah, give 8primal a shot. 8primal.com. Um, so, and y'all can ship to any state? Any state. Okay. Yep. Yeah. We're, Perfect. We're, we're, yeah we're, and, and the nice thing about being out of Texas um, is I love it's a pretty, good steak. It's pretty yeah. central, and it's it, the, the the meat is it's it's well, very. Having good. lived in Texas too, I understand Texas beef was yeah. It was great. We're gonna have yeah, to send a great, you a box. Great place to source it from for sure. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and yeah, and I think that's uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. But um, I really appreciate you having me out, oh, and it's, uh, it's cool it's to be pleasure. You know, have this connection <laughs> to my old hometown. On the way home, on the way back to Knoxville, I'm gonna 
you know, I'm going to drive through Pigeon Forge and some of these yeah. other places. Sure. And, you know. Well, we're on uh, the peaceful side, so you'll see memories. you'll see what it means to not be peaceful when you go to Pigeon Forge. It's it's fun over there, but it's a different. It's oh, a I know. Pace. This is, we're in the Smokies <laughs> right now. Oh, yeah. You know, this is, this is the peaceful side for sure. This is hike and bike and fresh yeah. air a yeah. moment for, for the Smokies. But just thank you so much for being a part of the, the show. And for everybody who's been listening today, we hope you enjoyed. I uh, learned a little bit more about Nate's story. Uh, we're going to do our best to get this edited, and hopefully it's going to air uh, as part of a Veterans Day oh, amazing. Uh, special. So um, for someone who's, who's helping vets, uh, we'd like to have this be as timely as possible. But thanks so much for... For joining us again for an episode of Distilling Greatness, please tune in next month. We'll have more content for you, and thank you all so much for supporting us.